right? Let's just improvise. How about that? That sounds great. Uh, I did a um, I did a show once with this guy, uh, and I we had never like really met before. Mm. Uh, my and now we're good friends. With my buddy Will and and before the show, he's like, "All right, uh, so what should we do? Uh, what do y'all want to do?" And I go, he, "I go, I don't know. Yes, and." And he was like, <laughs> and he was like, "All right, pal." But he's he's great. He's very funny. That Will Hines, by any chance? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's epic. Oh my God, he's so great. He's so funny. And yeah, we we met in uh, we met in Copenhagen. We worked at a festival and lived together. And I did not really know anybody who was like big in the UCB scene. Mm. And so I, I was like, oh, you do UCB. And then we ended up talking and we speak the same. I mean, we teach the same stuff. We, we look at it the same way. Uh, yeah. it's, it's very funny how it's, it's all, all of it is just really similar. Amazing. Improv is improv. It is. Um, let's see. We have one, two, three. Oh shit! We got seventy-seven suggestions. What? Yeah. What? Wait a minute. That's right. Yep. Yeah, I don't have a mic, so I've dropped a pen instead. Yeah, pen drop. That's a pen drop moment. Yeah. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely nailed it. Nailed it. Um. Which, what number, pick a number. Oh, um, <laughs> pressure, um, peer pressure, peer pressure, uh, 50, uh, 53, 53. Uh, solid number, 53. Yeah. I don't actually ever pick anything in the 50s, so I thought, there you go. <laughs> All right, so, uh, hey, Carl, hit the music, hit the selecting music. Here we go, 53, 77, 6, 5, 4, 3, this comes from Michael. Uh, and the suggestion is a dog's life. A dog's life. Thanks, Michael. Aww. Cool. You've been rolling in fox poo again, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, mate. Can you smell it? I mean, it's strong, I isn't can. it? 360 degree circle. Oh. Oh. Where'd you go? 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 Well, oh. Oh, there you are. I thought you left. I thought you left. I thought you left. I was like, oh, no, oh, no, no, no. You're going to leave. Don't leave. And then you didn't leave and you're still here. I would never leave you. Oh, 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 oh. Guess what I did. Guess what I did. Guess what I did. Uh, chased a ball, uh, ran after a squirrel, ate something you shouldn't have eaten, uh, stayed at home, tore up the couch. Well, uh, yeah, I did all of that, but I did, I did one worse. I did one worse. What? 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 What'd you do? What'd you do? What'd you do? I went to the park. My owner took me to the park. My owner took me to the park and I found a nappy, an open baby's nappy with lots of poo in it and I went and rolled in it. Oh, let me smell, let me smell, let me smell. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh. oh, that smells so good. Oh. Exhume crap. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh! Personal question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask away. Oh. Ask away. We're really good friends now, so it's all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I smell your butt? Incoming. <laughs> Beep! Dog 
Froggy reversing. Beep. Froggy reversing. Beep. <gasps> You've been eating pedigree sticks, haven't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Owner got it for me. Oh, they're the best. They're the best. They last the longest. Oh, they're the best. Nice to see you again. <laughs> question. Yeah? Question. Yeah? Now that we're friends, question. Yeah? yeah? Can, 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 can we roll on each other? Yes. Hold on, hold on. Take this flea collar. I don't know hold if on. It. Oh, she put me in a cone the other day. Whoa. I oh, know, the bitch. But you can't lick. No. I was scared I was going to go, like, you know, dry. Yeah. Hold on. <sighs> oh. It's like I'm just about to, it just about feels good and then it's still there. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Hey, 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 what? hey, what? hey, what? hey. What? Remember, what? remember when you just smelled my butt, remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty good. <laughs> Squirrel! So I heard a really funny story the other day. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, hold on. Okay. Well, you know, you know Ralph, the Doberman? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ralph and I go way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me a really weird story as to why we actually smell each other's butts. What? Yeah. He tell, told it, me... tell it in his voice. Tell it in his voice. Oh, 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 oh. He said, A long, long time ago, all the doggies went to a big party in the Greek times. And they all took their butts off and hang them up on a hanger. And there was a big fire. And all of the dogs started to panic. And they ran out of the Colosseum, grabbing the wrong butts and stuck them on. So now whenever dogs go and smell each other's butts, they're actually looking for their own backside. Wait, so, so I've said that a long time ago, during Greek time. Yeah. That all these dogs were in a Colosseum. They were in yeah. the Colosseum, and the they took their butts off. Yeah. And then there was a fire. They ran out of the Colosseum, and they grabbed the wrong butts. So all they're doing is looking for their right butts. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. That Major makes complete thoughts. sense. I mean, I'm always looking for mine. I'm always like, hmm, that one's not it. Hmm, that one's no. not it. Hmm, that one's no. not it. No. Do you even know what your butt is meant to smell like? Because I don't. Oh my God, Pitsy, you blew my mind. Uh, I don't know what my butt, what would my butt smell? Don't tell me. Don't you tell me. Do not tell me. Oh, okay. Let me, let me think. Uh, I think it's a combination of a faint, it's a faint odor of pedigree sticks. Yeah. I think, I think it's definitely kibble. I think there's yeah. some kibble there. Uh, yeah. I think there's a, uh, uh, there's a little bit of, of water. What the water yeah. smell, which is like, I guess no yeah. smell right there. Uh, hold on. Hey. Yeah. Hey, you ever think you can find and, and get your tail? Do you ever think like like eventually oh. you're gonna be able to grab your tail? Well well, they took mine off. Have you never noticed I don't have a tail? Turn around. But turn around quick, let me see. Oh you poor thing! I know, they docked my tail. No tail. I, do you feel like half a dog? Yeah. Did that bitch do it? Yeah. Oh. Apparently you can't have corgis with tails. The queen won't allow it. But I don't belong to the queen, so. Was that your, was that your dream one day is to to be owned by the queen herself? Yeah. I like to sit in 
Buckingham Palace and eat scones with jam and cream and get my nails done. Someone scratch behind the ear and I'd be able to say, hey, you cat, pick up my poo. Well, instead, you're just, you're owned by an architect in Liverpool. Yeah. And weirdly, he doesn't even have a nice house. There is absolutely no stable architectural structure that can hold the boundaries and limitations of my extreme excitement on a Monday and a Friday morning. I mean, you need to be set free. Yeah, I know. Empty. Let's make a run for it. Derek, I, I don't think I've ever told you this. But I've also got really little legs and can't run very fast. Get on my back. Can I get on your back? Get, climb on my back. I mean, okay, yeah. Get on. Well, they're, well, they're looking, they're looking. Well, they're gonna have to catch us. Come and catch me, bitch, okay? Hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry. And the clothes. Bad dog. Stop. You're going to have to stop. You got, I'm, I'm getting a stitch. I'm out of breath. I mean, you're out of breath. You've got a stitch. I felt your stitch. You felt it? Yeah. Well, hold on. That was you fun. Need some, you need some frontline spot on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, Denise doesn't believe in it. What? Yeah. She crazy? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, a, a, a whole lot, a whole lot of crazy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you're allergic to me. No, Dennis. No, Dennis Derek Barkington, no. Oh. My full name. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sir Pitsy Dogglesford <laughs> of Liverpool. That means so much to me. You simply had squirrel. Will you I do me swear they know what they're doing, you know. Do you think squirrels do? Yeah, like they're taunting us. Can you not hear them laughing? Where you going? Where you going? I'm gonna go get a squirrel. <laughs> How you doing? Hey. Yeah. Come here. <laughs> oh, Squirrel! Oh, I think my mum's calling me. Oh, I don't want to go. Well, I'll see you again. Right? Yeah, I suppose so. We're moving house, so I don't know if I'm going to be coming to this park all a lot. Oh. Yeah. Mum says, Mum says she's got a new job and she needs to go somewhere, another house. And then they're going to put me in a place where other dogs go. You're going to the park. The yeah. Park, the park up, it's, it's up country. Sheep. Oh, I hear it's endless bones and water as far as the eye can see and rainbows and it's always clear and it's always sunny and you never have to go home and you can, you never get tired and you run forever. Wow. 
I hear it's the greatest place a dog could ever go. Sounds pretty cool. You should come and visit me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, my owner, my owner says that it'll help with my limp. Yeah. It hurts when I run now. That's why I can't run that much. No, my, my, no, I, I have, I have a little lump. Mm. Oh. It's fine though. Yeah. It, it's fine. At the, uh, I hear at the, the doggy farm, they'll take care of that. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to see you there. Can you not come with me? Can you, oh, can you not ask your owner if you can come with me? We can go together. We can chase squirrels all day long. Yeah. Let's go now. Yeah. Hop on my back. Okay. Oh no. Mommy's still calling me. Yeah, you better go. I don't want to be told I'm a bad dog. No, you go. Okay. I gotta go too. Ow. Ow. Best paw friends forever. Best paw friends forever. Ow. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, yes, so fun. Oh, doggy. Oh, they're going to the farm. Yeah. The... <laughs> oh. Well, dog's life. It's a dog's life. And After a my, good dog's, life. my dog's name was Pitsy. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Her, her, oh, we call thanks for naming me after your dog. Yeah, uh, it, it, because it's easier to remember then instead of like the name I'm trying to give you that I'm going to forget. It's like, oh, I'll yeah. just my own dog's name. Yeah, yeah. We've got a retriever called Rosie. Really? I was actually going to call you Rosie and then I thought, mm. <laughs> I don't think you suit Rosie. So Derek Dennis Bothington or whatever <laughs> I called <it. laughs> I mean... It's so true also that like owners of dogs tend to give their dogs complicated names. Yeah. Although I do know someone who has a, a cockapoo called Dave. Oh, that's great. That kind of made my day when I heard that. <laughs> that's Dave so the cockapoo. Uh, I had a, I've got friends who just adopted a dog whose name was Karen. Oh, uh, was it a Karen? No, so they, they, well, they, they were first like, we're going to rehabilitate that name. We're going to make it so that it's not a negative connotation. Oh, uh, okay. But they, they gave up soon on that. And they, having <laughs> <laughs> them <lives> on. <laughs> yeah. They're like, it's too much of a task to try and overcome. <laughs> yeah, you'll never, you'll never win with a Karen. No, I, I feel bad for Karens too that like, now yeah. you're stuck with that name that everyone places as a negative. Yeah, I mean, even when you know someone called Karen and then the most positive person in the world, it's still funny to say, oh, stop being such a Karen. Yes. Like, even if they're being lovely. Like, can I get you a cup of tea? God, stop being a Karen. Such a Karen. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, how, how did you find improv? How'd you get into improv? Um, I didn't actually get into improv until I was in my teens. Um, I'd done acting kind of all the way through my life. Um, and I'd always done bits of improv through acting. But when I was growing up, I think like many people, it was just acting and scripts and yeah. this sort of thing. And improv was not a form that you could take and learn about and use and perform with. So it wasn't until I was in my teenagers that someone kind of went, you know, I think you'd be really good at doing improv. Um, I mean, actually, they didn't say that to me. They said, I think you'd be really good at making a general tit of yourself on stage. You should try improv. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's great. So I started with improv, but it wasn't really accessible, you know, or as much as I'd like it to be. Uh, but since lockdown, or since when everyone went on lockdown, that's when it became more accessible because it came online and then doors just started to open. Um, and now I'm in like two improv companies and it's a little bit bonkers really but great at the same time i mean 
that is the thing that like it has pushed improv forward in terms yeah. of not just like the amount of people able to do it now, but also things like like inclusion and diversity. I mean, these are issues that are coming up constantly. And the fact that it's now more of a global situation, you're able to reach out and play with people who who aren't like you, who you may have never met outside yeah. of this. And it's just made I feel like it's made improv just grow tremendously very quickly. Yeah, I mean, something for me that I've loved more than anything is just getting to connect. Yeah. and collaborate with people you know not just from liverpool or the uk but the us and it's like oh my god i mean i remember the first time i did a class with i can't remember who oh, i think it was liverpool comedy improv and i think it was michelle yeah. who came on and i fell in love with her accent within a minute of hearing her talk and i was like i want to be american <laughs> Epic. It's like so much better than my own. And then like, just as time went on, I was like, oh, I need to start seeing if like Second City are doing anything online or UCB or whatever else. And then, yeah, just getting to do things online that I wouldn't get to do offline, I suppose. My God, you're, you're one of the few that's like, I want to be American. <laughs> And it's all based on... I mean, the accent. I want the American accent. Not so much your politics. Mind you saying that our politics know better, so I'm not... Let's not go there. <laughs> well, <laughs> just speak really flatly with as little affectation as possible, and you pretty much have, have gotten the American accent. Sure. Yeah. I love the American accent anyway, you know. It's, it's great. It's so funny because, like you already have the ability to not give a fuck and are fearless that like it takes people years as they improvise to get to that point and a lot of times they just don't so i like like working and seeing you play i'm like oh yeah you just don't it's great you would jump in and as you said you make make a tit of yourself you have no mm -hmm. problem doing that and too many times people are so scared to, to be that silly and vulnerable, but it's it's huge, whether you're improvising, acting or whatever. Yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I was really quite shy, believe it or not. And then I, again, I got to meet me teens and I just went a little bit nuts and a little bit over the top, I think. And then when I got into my twenties, I'm so fed up of society, man. I just don't care anymore. I just hate people dragging you down or saying there's one way to be. So no, I'm, I'm going to be my own person. And that takes a lot to say that because you're always going to get judged and I actually don't care anymore. And I think the great thing about improv is that it teaches you how not to give one basically. Yeah. And I, I found that I've started not giving one. The more I do improv, the more I'm like, yeah, I'll do anything basically. Well, not anything, you know, with, within, within <laughs> <laughs> strip now. Okay. No, no, no. no. Well, <laughs> I mean, what we just did prove that because it's like if you had told someone, oh, I sniffed someone's butt in an improv scene, they would go, that seems really inappropriate. But in the context of what it was, that yeah. was completely authentic and, and a completely um, harmless move. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where the butt story came from. <laughs> Dogs in ancient Greece losing their asses. <laughs> this your brain. It was so. It's your. It, it's the other thing. It's your imagination. And and if you are of the mindset of like, I just don't care anymore. You'll make moves like that. But if you are still caring about what other people are going to say, you're not going to make that move. And to me, I'm like, that's such a wonderfully strong move is to tell that story about chasing the butts. It was just so great. <laughs> I love that story. I'm going to use that again somewhere. I'll put that into a conversation. When I'm looking for my, ne my new job and my, uh, my interviewer says, so what have you learned? I'll tell them that story. Yes. yes. I'm bound to get the job. Well, yeah. it's not what you say, it's how you say it, right? So if you say it with confidence, people are going to buy it. Yeah. I mean, my other idea was to go into an interview dressed as Batman. <laughs> I just sit there and say, I am Batman. Every time they ask me a question. Who doesn't like Batman? No one. So give me the job, basically. Uh, hey, good. Did you guys hear? Batman works here now. So on, until two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
If people want to like follow you, you know, uh, online or see things you're up to, like what's the best way they can do that? Uh, probably Facebook. Uh, well, yeah. If you, it, yeah, Facebook, Hannah McGowan, that's me. Hi. Um, Instagram and Twitter. I do a lot of talking about people and what they're doing and stuff and not really as much about me, but usually I'm doing something stupid like a dance or falling over or smacking a squirrel. I don't know. Um, so yeah, at Hannah underscore McGowan X. Um, and I'm also part of Boss Birds Improv, which is an all women based improv company in Liverpool. Um, Emma Birds, you know Emma Birds. Yeah. Um, Liverpool Comedy Improv. I do classes with them on uh, when 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 and where I can. Um, and Extreme Improv as well. Mm. Uh, I do shows with them kind of on a weekly basis as well. So yeah, that's me. Oh, in and my you're, you're crushing those shows with Extreme Improv. I love them. They're great. They're all short form, and I I love short form because you got to like think so quick. And I now have a tendency to eliminate myself before I'm eliminated by anyone else. <laughs> I'm doing a game and I'm like, questions only or something. I do a game and I can't fit a question. I'm just literally like, yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's literally what I do now. I can get rid of myself. You're like, so I'm just going to exit I'm... stage left before. <laughs> You're like, we all know I'm, I'm done after this. I'm just going to end it. <laughs> I love long form as well. Like I love what we've just done. So like, I love doing that, that as well. Cause then you, you get a, some form of a story um, and you can just go weird and go weirder and do the weirdest story ever. Well, I mean, that's it, right? It's like my, I have a, a buddy who says, Hey, if you get weird, I'm going to get weirder. And then that just leads to the most hilarious, fun moments of shows when you know somebody's not going to judge you, but they're going to hop on that train. It's so much more fun. Yeah. Yeah, totally. That's what improv is. It's fun. Until you send your dog to the animal farm, then it's a bit. Like that. It's still fun. It's still fun. It's, where still, it's, like, it's still funny. You know? at the farm. <laughs> You said, I love that you said, you go, yeah, come with me, okay. Oh, it was so good. You go like, I got a lump. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. It was like, of course. I love, like, I love stuff like that because that wasn't a punchline. That was just part of why they're, they're headed that way. So to me, I had like hearing that, I, I didn't laugh, but it was so fun to hear because it just made sense in the context. I thought it was great. Yeah. It's just two dogs living life, having fun, then they get old, and then yeah. they go and have fun somewhere else. I mean, it's kind of applicable to us as humans. Yeah, we all go to the farm at some point. We all cross that rainbow bridge. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what farm I'll end up at, but still, <laughs> crazy town. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> woo <-hoo -hoo! laughs> Uh, Anna, you're the best. It was so fun playing with you. I can't wait till we do it again, either another oh, yeah. virtual one or in person. Oh, both. Both. Yeah. I'll, I'll put myself in a suitcase and fly myself over to LA. Yeah. Yeah, it, it works well because we have no, you don't have to self-quarantine at all. So you could just come right on in. Oh, you've said it now. <laughs> I might have to get around Bojo first and his yeah. many rules. Uh, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, that's a whole other cuttle of fish. <laughs> uh, I'll see you soon, my friend. Thank you. Bye.